everyone and welcome to a video tutorial for this oak leaf and acorn necktie that you can see Malibu modeling here. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this necktie, you'll choose some yarn. I'm going with two colors for my leaves, so a dark green leaf and a reddish brown leaf. And then I'm using these two colors for my acorn. Okay, now I'm making two leaves, one acorn. You can mix up that those proportions. You could make one leaf, two acorns. You could make three leaves, one acorn. You, you know, you can do this however you like. I'm going to show you how to make the leaves. I'm going to show you how to make the acorn. And then you can, you know, you can style this how you want to. These are yarns that are just in my yarn stash. I've got, I think they're all wool acrylic blends to various um, proportions. This one might be a pure wool, but um, that doesn't matter. They've all long since lost their label, so I'm not really exactly sure what their composition is. But um, yeah, they're all about a two to three weight. It doesn't matter if your yarns aren't exactly the same weight. You know, that doesn't matter at all. You'll just get a, you know, slightly different result for, you know, for each each um, component so yeah you want them to be close but they don't have to be exactly the same now I'm going to use two different uh, hook sizes I've got a 3.5 millimeter and I'm going to use this for my larger leaf so I'm going to make my leaves two slightly different sizes just by varying the hook size and also this yarn here that I'm going to make my larger leaf with is just slightly thicker so I've got a slightly larger hook for that one so my brown leaf will turn out slightly larger and I've got a three millimeter that I'll use for my other leaf in this dark green and I'll also use this smaller hook for my acorn. I've got a darning needle with a pretty sharp point for some sewing and weaving in my ends. An optional stitch marker just to, we'll be working in the round for the acorn so you may want to mark your stitches. I've got a pair of scissors. Some stuffing for the acorn. I just have got some uh, cotton wool here, but if you've got yarn scraps or toy stuffing, anything that, that works. So just you only need a little bit of that for your acorn. And then you might want a tape measure to take a measurement of your cat's neck circumference. Entirely optional to have a, an accurate measurement for this project. We're just making ties so you can, you know, you can work with a ballpark figure. No need to have an exact measurement of your cat's neck circumference for this tutorial. And as always, check the description box below and you'll see that I've given you a guide to standard cat neck sizes. And you can work from that if you don't have an exact measurement. Okay, so here's the one that I've made previously. This one's made in a cotton. Uh, it's about a two-weight cotton. And I've used four colors. I've made the two leaves and the one acorn as I'm going to do today. So we'll start, so we've got three elements here. We'll start with the leaf and we'll make two of them. And to make the leaf, you'll need to know how to make a slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet and double crochet. And just a reminder that I use um, US terminology. From there with the leaf you'll need to uh, weave in your ends and just you know finish off your your leaf in that way and again we'll make two of them and then we'll move to the acorn and we'll we'll make this uh, bottom piece first and then this upper casing so for this we'll be using amigurumi techniques and it's you know if you've never done that before it's a good way just to you know dip your toes into the amigurumi method we will be uh, using a magic ring to get started, single crochet, single crochet decrease, and I'll show you how to do that in the amigurumi way. It just makes your your decreases a little bit less visible, but if, if you don't want to do those, no problem, you can just do a normal single crochet decrease. Um, we'll be doing some ba just some basic hand sewing techniques to finish off the shape of the acorn and sew the casing to the, the, the bottom of the acorn. The casing has the same techniques as the, as the, um, as the bottom. And then from there, the third element will be the ties and it's all in one piece. This, it's one tie really, it's all in one piece. And we'll be making a chain and slip stitching down the length of the chain. And 
we will have as we're making these elements we will have left a little a little loop at the top of the stems and we'll just thread our tie through the through the stems through the you know the loop in the stem and then you've got the option to do some hand sewing to um, you know put your acorn and your leaves in place I haven't tacked down the acorn I've just left that free but I've I've put a little stitch into the into the leaves just to hold them in place like this so you know that's optional at the end of your work so um, other than you know yeah other than weaving in your ends and just making your project nice and neat with a little bit of hand sewing you know we're using fundamental crochet techniques and should be accessible for most beginners so if you're not sure on some of the techniques you can brush up on some tutorials on youtube any resources that you've got before you get started i just i don't run through the stitches the fundamental stitches in any great detail um, there's a few techniques that I will slow down and show you but if you need to run through those you know what is a half double crochet what is a double crochet then you know it might be worth doing so before we get started anyway let's get started and make our first leaf okay so to make your first leaf you'll make a slip knot onto your hook now I'm using my smaller hook this is going to be my smaller leaf with my dark green yarn so I'm going to make a slip knot onto my hook so you just do that however you do it lots of different ways to make a slip knot so from here we're going to chain 12 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 okay so how we're going to work this is we're going to work basically two rounds so we're going to work down one side of our chain up the other side then we're going to create our stem come back down to the the main leaf and then we're going to work another round shaping the oak leaf okay so we're going to start from the second chain from the hook and you'll place a single crochet just working into the top loop of your chain or the top V one single crochet and then you're going to place a single crochet into the next three stitches so you've got a total of four single crochets at the beginning of your first round in the next four stitches you're going to half double crochet so yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three and that's a half double crochet so we'll do three more of those two three and four in the next two stitches we're going to make double crochets so yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and then once again a double crochet in the next chain okay so we're at the last chain and in this last chain we're going to work our way round to the other side by placing six single crochets into this last chain and you see that'll take us around the corner so that's one two three four let's move that tail out the way five and six now this you can see brings us nicely around the corner to start to work along the other side of the chain so we're we're just going to mirror what we've done on this on this first side okay so in that next chain you're going to place your double crochet so you're working into the other side of the chain and you can work over your tail here or you can just leave it aside to work in at the end so the first two chains are double crochets so just a simple mirror of what we did in the previous row working backwards four half double crochets so that's one and I'm working over my tail and two three four five and four 
And then in the last four stitches, we've got those single crochets. So one, two, three, and in the very last one, our last single crochet. Okay, so that's the first round. Okay, so now we're going to create the stem. So slip stitch into that turning chain at the beginning. Well, it wasn't even a turning chain, that first, very first chain, which we didn't work into. Okay, so slip stitch into there. And then you're going to create the stem with the little loop in it that you can thread the tie through. So that you can make your stem as long or as short as you like. You can make, you know, the two stems on each leaf a slightly different length if you want to. I'm going to chain two, three, and four for the length of my stem. And then I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six to get my loop. So I'm going to count backwards. One, two, three, four. And in the fifth, actually, no, the sixth, the sixth chain, I'm going to place my first slip stitch. Okay, and that will give me my loop. Now I'm just going to check my loop to see if it's big enough. I might even make it one more. So you, you'll just, it'll depend on the color or the, well, you'll need to decide the color that you're making for your tie and you'll, the yarn that you're using and you'll have to work out whether you can fit that through your, your, your uh, loop. Okay, so... If you like, you could make your tie first, you could skip forward. But, you know, I think you're probably going to be able to estimate it. Okay, so you just want a, a big enough loop that you're going to be able to thread your tie through. So let's go with that. I've just made mine one bigger. Any better, of course, to go just slightly larger than you think you need. But not too large. And then I'm just going to slip stitch down the remaining, the remaining chains. To give me my stem okay so you know it's arbitrary how many chains you chain and then how many slip stitches you do it's entirely up to you how long you want your stem and how big you want your your loop okay and now we're going to slip stitch into that same place that we slip stitched into before we chained for our stem okay now I can snip off my snip off my tail end here I think I've worked over enough and then we're going to move on to round two okay so for our last and uh, our next and final round for our oak leaf we're going to um, shape the leaf so just if you can remember on here we're going to be working these oak leaf shapes around the edge here so this is our our final round so in that first single crochet you'll place a single crochet in the next two stitches you'll place double crochet that's one and Oh, actually, sorry, I've done that wrong. Forgive me. So the first single crochet, we've placed a single crochet. In this next stitch, it's actually two double crochets in that same stitch. I, I beg your pardon. So you've got two double crochets in the second stitch. You're going to chain a two and then slip stitch into that same stitch. So the same stitch that you put your two double crochets in, you're going to slip stitch. And that gives you your, your first little, little um, uh, oak leaf shape. Into the next stitch, you're going to slip stitch as well. Single crochet in the next. Half double crochet in the next. Double crochet by three in the next. So three double crochets in the next. And you can see we're creating our 
next little shape here. Chain three, and then slip stitch back into that same stitch. So where you place those three double crochets, slip stitch back into that same stitch. Slip stitch in the next stitch. Single crochet, oops, single crochet in the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next. Double crochet in the next. Two double crochets in the next. So in the same stitch, two double crochets. Two. Chain two, slip stitch back into that same stitch, slip stitch into the next stitch. So we're working into the single crochets going around the corner here. Slip stitch into the next stitch. And then in the same stitch, the next stitch, you'll place a single crochet, a half double crochet. So this is all in the same stitch and a double crochet. Okay, so you've got your first, your first half of this round. Now we're going to repeat what we've just done in the exact reverse. Okay, so in the next stitch, place a double crochet and then a half double crochet, so all in the same stitch and then a single crochet. Slip stitch into the next stitch and then the next stitch as well, slip stitch into that stitch. We're going to chain two here, double crochet twice into that same stitch that you've slip stitched into and made a chain from. Double crochet in the next stitch. So we're just working in the exact reverse. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Single crochet in the next. Slip stitch in the next stitch. Slip stitch in the next stitch. Chain three. Double crochet by three in that same stitch. One, two, and three. And half double crochet in the next stitch. Single crochet in the next. Slip stitch in the next slip stitch in the next, chain two, double crochet in that same stitch, and again a second double crochet in that same stitch. And then to finish off we've got one stitch left, a single crochet. So we've just worked an exact, the exact reverse to give us the mirror image. So you can see you've got a lovely looking oak leaf there. Now you're just going to yarn over and pull through, tie off your work. Here, yeah, leave a bit of a tail. You might want to do a little bit of sewing later. So I just leave, I always leave a little bit more than I need. And there you have your first oak leaf. So we're going to weave in that tail end eventually. But what I would do for now is recommend, or what I recommend that you do for now, is just leave that tail for now. Okay, so just in case you need it for some sewing later. And we can weave in our tail ends later anyway. But that's your first leaf. And you're just going to repeat that again for your second leaf. And as I said at the beginning, I'm going to use a larger hook size 
and a slightly heavier weight yarn and so I'm going to get a slightly larger leaf just to you know just to add a little bit of you know dimensionality to my leaves so I'm going to go ahead and make my second leaf uh, my slightly larger leaf and I'll meet you once I've done that Oh, and just to say, when you get to the stem, you can choose to make the stem the same length or you could make it a slightly different length. It's entirely up to you. You know, if you want the, 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 the second leaf to sort of hang down a little bit further, you know, just adjust the size of the stem or the length of the stem. Keep this loop the same, but you can just lengthen the stem or even shorten it if you want to. So just a reminder there. Otherwise, just do everything else in the same way. Okay, so there I've got my two, my two leaves. You can see that one is just slightly larger than the other, just because I used that different hook size. So now we're going to move on and make our acorn. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the acorn, and we'll be making this small, this under part of the acorn first. Now I've got my colour here. I'm going to double strand this yarn actually because it's quite fine. So I want it to be just a little bit thicker. So I'm going to double strand. And then I'm going to make a magic ring. So you do that how you do yours. That's the way I do it. So you do your magic ring your way. And then we're going to place six single crochets into the ring. So that's one. Oh, and just just to remind you, I've gone back to my three millimeter hook. So that's one and two and three and four, five and six. Okay, so you can pull your ring closed here a little bit. And you don't have to close it fully. We can close it uh, more fully later. And then we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch to join our, join our round. Now here's where you can use a stitch marker if you want to. You don't have to. But if, especially if you're new and you're not used to increasing in the round, it's a good idea just to mark that last, that last stitch. Okay. So now we're going to chain one. And, you know, there's a couple of ways that you can increase in the round. What I always do is I don't work back into that same stitch I've slip stitched into at the beginning of the round. Okay, so I move on to the next stitch and my, I start my round from there. Some, some people prefer to start from where they've slip stitched, but you know, if, if you're used to that, then you do that your way. Otherwise, come with me. So we're going to increase this to 12 stitches now. So we've got six stitches there. Now we're gonna to increase to 12. So into the first stitch, place two single crochets and then we're going, going to just place two single crochets in each of our stitches until we have a total of 12 stitches so that's six seven and eight, nine, and ten. And then where we've marked that last stitch, we place our last two stitches. And that gives us 12. And then we're going to ignore the chain and slip stitch into our first stitch. Now, if you need to count back and just make sure you've got the right number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and slip stitch into your twelfth. And then you can once again mark that last stitch. And that's the end of round two. Now you can pull your you can pull your ring more closed now if you want to. 
So we've got our first two rounds. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to increase to 18 stitches. Okay. So in this first stitch, we're going to place one single crochet. And in the next stitch, we're going to place two single crochets. So we're making an increase in every second stitch and that will give us our 18 at the end. So one single crochet in the next and then two single crochets in the next. Okay, so repeat that pattern all the way around until your stitch marker or until the end of your round. And in the last stitch, you'll have two single crochets. So that's how you know you've counted well. And I'll meet you once I get round to the end of this round. Okay, so I'm at my last stitch. I'll just remove my stitch marker and place my last two single crochets in that last stitch. Skipping the chain, I'll slip stitch into my first stitch. And once again, count backwards if you need to to make sure you're slip stitching into the right stitch. And then mark your last stitch. Okay, so now we're going to place just for one round we're going to place one single crochet in each stitch so once again starting from the first stitch oh forgot to chain one sorry chain one first and then starting from the first stitch single crochet and then one single crochet in each stitch until you get round to your stitch marker okay once again I'm round to my stitch marker my last single crochet in the stitch marker. So our stitch count hasn't changed. We've still got 18 stitches there. And then we'll slip stitch into that first stitch once again and mark the last one. Okay, so now we're going to do a decrease round. Now, if you are familiar with the amigurumi decrease, then great, use it, and I'll show you it here as well. If you're not, and for whatever reason you don't want to use it, you can just do a normal single crochet decrease. I'm not going to show that here today, but if you know what that is and you prefer to use that, then, then go ahead. So in this, we're going to chain one first. So in this first stitch, we're going to place one single crochet. So we're going to decrease down to 12 stitches. In the next, using the next two stitches, we're going to make a decrease. Now the amigurumi way is insert your hook into the front loop of the next stitch and then into the front loop of the next stitch. And then we're going to complete our single crochet through those two loops, okay? In the next stitch, one single crochet. And then the amigurumi decrease in the next two stitches. So insert your hook just into the front loop, okay, of the, of the stitch in the previous round. And then into the front loop of the next stitch. And then finish off your single crochet decrease there. And it just makes your decreases a little bit less obvious than doing the normal single crochet decrease. So go ahead and finish off this round. So one single crochet in the next stitch and then your decrease in the next two stitches okay so at the end of this round you will have 12 stitches so work all the way around to your stitch marker and I'll meet you there okay so I've just finished off my last decrease in this round and then I'm going to skip the chain and slip stitch into that first stitch so we're back down to 12 stitches now Okay, and then remark your last stitch. And at this point, we're going to stuff our acorn. So just pull out your hook for a moment, stuff in the, the tail, your beginning tail, and then take your stuffing, whatever you're using, and stuff, stuff your acorn. So stuff it nice and firmly, but not overstuffed, so you can see the stuffing through the stitches. You can use the end of your hook or front of your hook, whatever you've got. And you can always add just a little bit more later. 
but let's get it as well stuffed as we can just for now. And then we've got, so you just stuffed the, the base there. So now we've got two rounds of one single crochet in each, in each stitch. So insert your hook again. And then for the next two rounds, you're just going to make one single crochet in each stitch. So you will have 12 stitches. So just one single crochet in each stitch. So go ahead and finish off those next two rounds. One single crochet in each stitch, slip stitch at the end of your round, chain one, which I keep forgetting to do. I've forgotten to do it again. No wonder that was tight in there. I've been working on a project that um, just works in a spiral. I think that's what's happening to my brain. So I'm forgetting to... I'm forgetting to chain one. But don't you do that. <laughs> Remember to chain one and then work your one single crochet in each stitch uh, until you've finished two rounds. Okay, so I've just finished my two rounds of one single crochet in each stitch. And now I can do a little bit more stuffing. So stuff a little bit more if you want to. And we're down to our last, our last couple of rounds. So just stuff, pull out your hook if you need to. Stuff your acorn a little bit more. So you want to get that nice acorny shape, nice plump acorn. So stuff your acorn as much as it needs to be. And then we're going to finish off with our last two rounds. So the next round, the second to last round, is one single crochet decrease in each stitch. So, you know, using the amigurumi method. So let's chain one. And using each stitch, we're going to make a decrease. So in those first two stitches so it gets a little bit fiddly at this point but do your best so that's one so I'm going to finish off my next decreases so we're decreasing down to six stitches so do a single decrease one in each stitch single crochet decrease one in each stitch you know you know so you get down to six stitches what I mean is using two stitches together and doing your single crochet. It's a little bit fiddly in there for me, especially because I've got two strands as well. But go ahead and do your best, finish off your second to last round, and I'll see you soon. Okay, just remove my stitch marker and place my last decrease in those last two stitches. One and two strands. And there's my last decrease and skip my chain and slip stitch across so now we're going to drop our crochet hook finish your last slip stitch now you can pull out your hook here and you don't need to mark your stitches anymore now if you need to just do a little last minute stuffing you can Get just a little bit more in there if you want to. So just take the end of your hook, stuff it down there. So you've got that nice acorn shape here. Yeah, I'd like to make mine just a little bit plumper. So I'm going to stuff a little bit more in there. So now's the time to do this last minute stuffing. Using You could use a smaller hook, you could use a needle if you're having trouble getting it down there. Nice plump, plump acorns. And then we've got our last round, which we're going to do with our needle, our darning needle. Okay. Okay. So now you'll pull out, you'll pull out a length of your yarn. Now remember I've got double strands, so it just looks like I've got more strands than you perhaps. 
But what you'll do now with my scissors, okay, got my scissors. So now you'll leave, you'll leave a, you know, a good amount for doing a little bit of hand sewing. And we're going to sew the bottom, the bottom together, and we're going to create that little, little point on the end. So take your darning needle and your thread. You can move, I'll move that stitch marker out of the way now. Thread my needle, and once again, I've got two strands. So I'll thread with both of my strands. Now we're just going to, so we're basically going to do a decrease round using our needle and thread. Okay, so pick up so pick up the loops of your stitches using your needle. So pick them up in twos, just as you've been doing with your single crochet decrease. So you'll do that three times because you've got three so sorry, you've got um, six stitches, so you'll do that three times, two loops each time. And then the last one, the last two loops. A little bit of stray stuffing, I'll fix that up at the end. Now we're just going to make a little, you want to make just your little bobble on the end. So the way I do that is I just put my needle across now just across the, that bottom bottom bit. Let's get that through. And once again, I've got double strands, so it looks a little bit different to your work, perhaps. Just pull, make sure I've got that tail out, which is the tail end. Just want to bring those tails through. There we go. And then I'm going to just make it, so I'm going, I've pulled my, my yarn through across the end and then I'm just going to make a little, a little knot by th threading my needle through those loops. Just move that. And it will create a little knot at the end that gives you just that little, little acorn shape. Now you can do a couple of them if you want to. Just push your your needle back through. And this will secure your end as well. Sorry, that's a little bit a little bit messy with these two strands. Hopefully you've just got one. It's a little bit more simple and then I'll push my needle through those those loops and make another little knot. And that just gives me a little a little point to my acorn. And then I'm going to weave in these ends and the way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to push my yarn through from the bottom up into the acorn along the side here. Come out somewhere a little bit higher. There we go. Pull that needle through. She, my fingers are a little bit slippery, so I'm just going to do this off camera. I'll be right back. Got my trusty piece of old rubber glove here that just helps me pull my pull my needles when my fingers are a little bit sweaty, which happens quite a lot here in Marseille. And plus, because I've got the two strands, it just makes things a little bit trickier as well to get that through. So you'll push it up into the side there and then you can shape your bottom a little bit more as well. So you don't want to pull through too tight so you lose that little, sh see I've got that little shape on the bottom there just to give that little acorn, that little acorn effect. And then you can pull through a second time, maybe go back in where you came up and go down again on an, in another area just to weave in this tail end so it's invisible in there just 
and just shape that a little. So you'll just shape your acorn how you want it to look. I just need to pull out that little bit there. And then I've got, oh, that's perfect. Nice. So there's the inside of the acorn. And once you've, you know, you've gone through a couple of times, you're going to snip off this, this, these tails or this tail. And we're going to make, and before you actually, before you move, you can just, if there's any little bit left out, you can just poke that back in. So there's the inside of my acorn. So now we're going to make the covering that goes, sits on the top of the acorn. And it's a very similar technique. So we'll move on to that now. Okay, so we'll start the casing off in exactly the same way. And I'm back to one strand, which makes things much easier. So we'll make a magic ring. Oops. So we're going to make a pretty much the same, do the same thing, but just half a thing with a stem okay so we're going to place six single crochets into the magic ring one two three four five and six Close our ring. So it's pretty much exactly the same techniques as we've done, we did for the for the main part of the acorn, for the uh, like the little inside part. Slip stitch into that first that first stitch, and once again you can mark. So then we're going to place, just as we did for the first part of the acorn, we're going to place two single crochets in each stitch for the second round. So go ahead and place two single crochets in each stitch and I'll meet you at the end of round two. Okay, so that finishes up my round two. Now, I should have mentioned before, but I, I guess I'm probably stating the obvious here. The yarn that you use for the, the casing and the yarn that you use for the main acorn part obviously needs to be very similar weight and you want to use a similar hook size, okay? Because the casing needs to be able to fit perfectly over the acorn, okay? So, yeah, I know that... I'm, I'm sorry if that's super obvious, but I just wanted to make sure that that was clear because I, I didn't mention it before. Okay, so we're going to move on to row three and chain one. And then we're doing the same row three as we did for the main acorn piece. So one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochets in the next stitch. So increasing up to... 18 stitches. So go ahead and finish off your round three and I'll see you at the end of round three. Okay so we've got uh, 18 stitches there after round three. Now for the next two rounds we're going to place just one single crochet in each stitch. Okay so sticking with the stitch count of 18 just one single crochet in each stitch for the next two rounds okay so there I've got my little case my little hat for my acorn so you can just check that it fits on nicely and then we're going to so we can once you've done those last two rounds you can yarn over and pull through. And you can tie off here. So take your scissors, just snip a, just a normal tail. Just We're going to just weave in that tail. So this tail can sit inside. Just make sure you're... Magic ring is pulled nice and tightly, and then you, that tail can just sit inside. But this one we need to weave in, so let's 
take our darning needle and we'll just so just uh, do this as neatly as you can so what I do is I just try to neaten up that you could do an, invis an, an invisible finishing stitch here if you want to I'm not going to do it on this on this project but if you wanted to you could so I'm just going to weave in this tail end so I'll just turn my little case inside out for a moment and I'll just weave in underneath on the inside just a couple of times and then you, you don't even need to weave it in that much you can just stuff that tail in there too it's not too long now we're just going to make quickly a stem for our acorn so take your your same color and we'll just make a slip knot onto the hook and then you'll chain so we're just going to do pretty much the same thing as we did on the on the leaf so you'll just chain the amount that you need for the stem plus the plus the loop so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so I've been doing eleven I'm just going to do the same and then I'm one two three four five six I'm slip stitching into that sixth stitch and then I'm just slip stitching down the remainder of that chain so this will give me my stem for my acorn with my little my little loop in it so I can thread it onto my um, onto my tie and then I'll just yarn over pull through just leave a tail so have a little bit of a tail because you want to use this to sew your stem and your case onto your main acorn part so what I do with these two tails is I just tie a little a little simple knot you've got your little loop there and then we're just going to sew so I tend to sew one tail at a time just so I get it nice and symmetrical so just thread your needle and you'll place it down through the center of your casing so bring bring your stem onto your casing and then find your your acorn and then we're just going to so and attach this piece onto the main part of the acorn so just like so so what I do is I'll go up and back a couple of times so I come back up into the casing just to give me and I'm going to do this again with my second tail as well so just to, to make sure you hide it just go back in that same place where you can't, you went in and then I'm just going to go back down again and through just to get that on there and it doesn't have to be super firm and then I'll just do this the same thing with this other just want it attached so it doesn't you know they don't separate it doesn't have to be you know super super well attached push that through oh, might need my piece of rubber here and if you do use both both uh, both tail ends you get that nice and symmetrical and then let's let's go back back up again so back where you came through, back up into the, the top part, my piece of rubber again there, yeah there we go, and then I'll go back down, now I'll finish this off off camera, so you just finish um, sewing your, sewing your case to your acorn, and then you'll just do the same as we did before with the tail ends. We'll just bring that back 
down here and we'll just uh, snip those off and and um, just gently stuff any that's showing back into the inside of the acorn actually let's just let's just finish this together there we go so that's that's done and we'll just snip these we'll just snip these ends off and like I said if there's any showing you can just push that inside on inside and if there's any pieces of stuffing showing you can just sort of stuff them in and there's your there's your little acorn they're super cute aren't they <laughs> I love them okay so we've got all our pieces now except for our ties so we're going to just make a tie now you'll decide which which uh, color or if you want another a separate color for your for your tie, you can you know you can make it in whatever colour you want. What what colour am I going to do mine in? I might do mine in the in the brown, in the dark brown. So you'll just simply it's as simple as making a chain. So let's take my I'll use my larger hook. So you'll just make a slip knot onto your hook. And you'll just create a chain that's going to give you enough for your cat's neck circumference plus being able to tie a knot or a bow at the back of their neck. So um, I'm going to do about 100, 120 chains with my hook size and my yarn and um, for Melba's neck circumference. So you work out how much you, you need for your yarn, your hook size and the size of your cat. And I'll meet you once I've done my chain. Okay, so I've got a 100 chains there. And I'm just going to now if you wanted to just leave your ties as a chain you could certainly do that and especially if you're worried that if you make it any wider you won't fit through your loop so just you know just double check that otherwise I'm going to make so you can you know you can just tie off here and just use a chain but I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch because I just think it's slightly neater and I've got loops that are big enough so I'm just going to slip stitch one in each chain starting from the second chain from the hook and slip stitch all the way down the length of my chain to create my create the tie or the ties that will tie at the back of Melba's neck. So I'm going to finish off these slip stitches all the way down to the end of my chain and I'll see you soon. Okay, so I've slip stitched all the way down my chain. Now I'm just going to yarn over, pull through, and once again snip off my tail end. And I'm just going to tie a simple double knot in this end just to make that a little neater. Now, just for now, just leave your leave your your tails on there or at least one of them let's uh let's weave in the other actually just for now so just to uh finish that off for now so leave leave one of your tails unwoven and just in case you need it to help thread your tie through your loops but just otherwise just weave this into the back as neatly as you can So you'll eventually do that with both tails. Oh, my yarn split. Okay, I'm going to do that off camera just so you don't have to watch me do that. But you'll just weave your tail down, down into the end here. And like I said, leave this other tail just in case you need it to help thread your, uh, your loops onto your tie. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I've got all my pieces there. Now we're going to tidy up all of this and attach them all together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to weave in one of the tails on one of my leaves because I don't need both. So see how I'm just going to use that to neaten up and just attach it, that edge just towards the stem a little bit and then I'm going to weave this in the back here. So you can go ahead and weave in one of your tail ends and even, you can even weave in both if you want to but you might want to save one 
as I was saying at the beginning, save one for attaching your two leaves together. Let's just do this quickly on camera here. I'll just weave that tail end down. Snip off the excess. So I've got my two leaves and I'm actually going to thread first. So I'm going to work out how I want my, my uh, leaves to go. So I'm going to use my tail end on the end of my tie and just use thread my needle with it just because it's just going to make that just that little bit easier to thread to thread through so I'm going to put my I'm going to put my acorn on first so I just thread the needle through there get the tie through there and then the next leaf that I want Actually, maybe I should do this the other way around. Yeah, let's do this the other way around. So let's put this leaf on first. I can do it without my needle because I've got plenty of space. Yeah, let's do it this way around. So put this one on first and then my next leaf. So you'll arrange them how you want them to be arranged, but probably you want your acorn at the front, your biggest leaf at the leaf at the back. And let's put my acorn on next. And last. Now, as I said, you can use this. See how it kind of it doesn't the leaves don't sit separate unless you make a little bit of sewing together of the leaves so I'm going to thread my green one so it's best to use the the top the top color so I'll just close up that little gap that's between the last stitch and the stem there and then I'm just going to work out how I want this to sit maybe I want them to sit like that yeah Let's make them sit like that so just work out how you want them to sit and then you're just going to just do a little bit of sewing of these two leaves together and you can do it you know so it, it doesn't show come back up through here that's why it's best to use the the color the top color and just let your leaves sit how you want them to sit when the necktie is on your cat so let's see how we're looking with that before I before I tie that off yeah and you can even you know you can even attach if you want to you can even attach your acorn as well I'm not going to I, I like that one just to stay a little bit looser but you could you know you could it, you could use a bit of um, the same color as your acorn and you could just do some do some stitching there if you wanted to just to make the acorn sit where you want it to too so you know these little these little finishing touches are entirely up to you but then I'm going to weave in this green end in the back of my green leaf. So I'll do that off camera and uh, I'll also weave in my other tie end, tail end, and I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so there's my little necktie finished. And I did end up, uh, the way it was sitting, I did end up just tacking the, the acorn down as well. So you can see how that's sitting now. So, you know, just a bit of autumn fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial. You know, it just gives you a few new techniques as well. I think that's always fun to experiment with some new techniques, especially if you've never made an amigurumi acorn before. You know, it just gives you some practice at those techniques. And there we can compare and contrast with my... So this one was uh, raw cotton, like it's like completely cotton, 100% cotton, and it's quite, it's not, it's it's not a soft cotton. It's quite a kind of what I call a raw cotton, and that sits. The leaves sit flatter. This is uh, the acrylic wool, and it doesn't quite sit. But it's quite, you know, it's a different, it's a different look, and you know, I like both of them. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, a little bit of fun as always. I hope that my tu tutorials encourage you to crochet, try some new techniques and, you know, just have a little bit of fun with your cat. So thanks so much for being here. As always, I would love to see your photos of how yours has turned out. Um, so please send those along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So thanks very much for being here and we hope to see you soon. Okay, bye. She's looking right at me. Oh, yeah, you're hilarious. Such a good girl. Good girl. <laughs>